Welcome to our 42nd Wonder Space Journey. My name is Steve Cole and since September 2020, I have been asking the same six questions to people from around the world. The questions revolve around life and wonder, places of reset and stories of hopefulness. Before we introduce our guest, our friends at asknature.org are going to help us to re-wonder. The key to the sinuous movements of an elephant's trunk is not in bending or twisting, but in constricting. Muscles that radiate out from the center line flex at any point along the trunk to form a temporary joint, giving dexterous control over the other motions and allowing elephants to lift and maneuver anything from a blade of grass to the trunk of a tree. This week, our orbit will give us a stunning view of Spain and the Balearic Islands. And to experience these views with us in this ultimate window seat, we welcome Douglas Samuel. Douglas is the chief executive at the Spartans Community Football Academy in Edinburgh and was nominated by our fourth guest on Wonder Space, Nathan Atkinson from Rethink Food. Here is Nathan telling us why he nominated Douglas. I've nominated Doogie because the outcomes that he's achieved in founding and um, developing the Spartans Community Football Academy are truly incredible. Um, Doogie is somebody who makes things happen. Uh, he's selfless and driven, and I am truly in awe of his commitment and his passion in improving outcomes for the local community. And I'm sure you'll enjoy his journey. The full length interview with Douglas can be found on the Wonder Space podcast which you will find on our brand new website and on most podcast platforms. But for this shortened video orbit, Douglas answers three of our six questions. And I start by asking, from this window seat, which place, city or country would you want us to fly over and why? It's probably a bit of a boring answer, but without question it would be Edinburgh, my home. Um, I'm extremely proud to come from Edinburgh. I'm obviously biased, but it's a stunning city, a beautiful city. Um, but in particular, a part of the city called Leith, which is a port within the city where I grew up. And within that area, a specific block of council housing or social housing called the Banana Flats. A block of flats made famous by the film Train Spotting. You may remember the character Sick Boy lived in the Banana Flats. I often get asked why they're called the banana flats, and it's because the, the, the building is in the shape of a curve. Um, if you imagine a large block of flats shape, in the shape of a curve, sorry, on 10 floors, you'll get a sense of the scale. If you imagine a typical tenement house of six or eight families, this block of what I would call concrete heaven was home to over 200 families. So it was a really interesting place to grow up, a place that was fully honest, hard-working, what you would call working-class families. Fully characters, fully personalities, and certainly where I learned my values. My life is really a combination of three things, I guess. Um, I worked in Standard Life for 21 years, so I joined Standard Life straight from school. Worked in different parts of the business, so I worked in customer service division before I then worked in major projects. Worked in a call centre for a while and then I found my sort of, I guess, my destiny, if you like, in HR. I ended up being responsible for the modern apprenticeship programme for the whole of the UK for Standard Life, which was a wonderful job and a job I really enjoyed. But as part of that job, I was sent on lots of different personal development courses. So I would go on courses where I would get to walk over hot coals and break blocks of wood with karate chops and break arrows with my throat and all this type of thing. And of course, every time I went on one of these courses, I was invited to think about what my life's purpose was, what my values were, what drove me, so on and so forth. And the more I reflected, the more I thought about the fact that perhaps I was in the wrong place. And I wanted to help people. I wanted to work in the third sector. But I also had an aspiration to be a, an elite football coach. So I took a plunge, I took volunteer redundancy and I left Standard Life after 21 years to become a house husband, to spend more time with my two daughters and my wife 
and to coach the University of Edinburgh. So whilst I was spending time as a house husband and coaching the University of Edinburgh, the chairman invited me to do a piece of work in relation to that project. And in simple terms, it was a bit needs analysis. It was to liaise with the local schools to ask them if they would use the new facility, um, the new facility he dreamed of creating at the home of Spartans. But what actually happened was, to cut a long story short, Spartans ended up selling their ground um, and creating a brand new home literally two by kicks away over the road. So I was fortunate enough to get involved in that project from the very beginning, and I'm still here. And that project, in simple terms, was to build a new four million pound sports facility that could be the home for the football club, but also could be a social home for the community. So a place where people could feel a real sense of belonging, where our doors would be open and welcome to everybody from all walks of life. And we would provide services for people from all walks of life, from all different backgrounds. Really turning the model of a football club on its head, whereby the football club almost borrows the facility back from the community as opposed to the football club giving the community a loan of the facility. So, so really sort of like tipping things on its head. The interesting thing is that I only ended up at Spartans on the back of being rejected elsewhere. And this is probably one of my my great life lessons is that often when we think something that's happening to us is the worst possible thing that could happen and it's a devast it's devastating news, it actually leads to great things. Um, and it reminds me of Steve Jobs' quote, which is, we can only join the dots looking back. It's not until several years later that when I look back, I think, gosh, if I hadn't been rejected there, that wouldn't have led me to Spartans. And if I hadn't ended up at Spartans as a player, I wouldn't have ended up being the chief executive of the Charitable Arm and the football club. So I work for, today, the Spartans Community Football Academy, which as I alluded to is the Charitable Arm and the football club. We're a registered charity. We're also a social enterprise. So we run and manage this £4 million sports facility as a social enterprise. And we take the profits from trading, the money that's raised from obviously our charity fundraising efforts, and we deliver services across three or four thematic areas for the benefit of our community. So again, you've heard me say this already, I'll try and keep it simple. We're trying to make a difference in our wee patch of the world. How can we improve the quality of people's lives living in North Edinburgh? And for some people living in this community, life's tough, it's difficult, it's home to areas of multiple deprivation, but it's also home to some amazing people and to some amazing organisation doing some great things. So we work across three or four thematic areas, those being education, youth work, health and wellbeing, physical activity. And we also try and play an active part in trying to create community cohesion um, that leads to tackling social needs, social issues in a meaningful, dignified and compassionate way. So trying to work with partners who are like-minded. My story of hopefulness is born out of human connection. We had a young lad who worked here, who grew up in Lock End, in quite a tough part of Edinburgh, was kicked out of school at 15, didn't leave with any qualifications, came to work for us um, and did a fantastic job. And through connections that we have, i.e. a former employee being based elsewhere, this young lad for Lock End got the chance to go on the inaugural Michael Johnson Global Leadership Programme. Imagine being one of the first 12 young people to be chosen for a leadership program being designed and developed by Michael Johnson. This led to him becoming an ambassador for a global organization called Coaches Across Continents. Where the connection comes in is that at the same time, I was connected to a woman called Dr. Shukla Bose in India, who runs a foundation called the Parikama Foundation, which is in simple terms, a foundation set up to provide education for kids who are living in the slums. An incredible project, an incredible project. Fast forward a couple of years and we were able to connect Jamie to Shukla. And Jamie spends time at Parikama teaching and training some of the teachers how to use sport for development activities to educate these kids who've come from the slums about things like United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and the like. A wee boy for Lock End who left school with no qualifications, helping to make a difference in India, purely through the power of human connection. Amazing.
On the Wonder Space podcast, you can hear the extended interview with Douglas, where he talks about his place of reset and recharge. He also shares about the wonder of the natural world that blows the fuses and ends up the podcast by challenging us with a question around impact. The podcast can be found at ourwonder.space. To find out more about the remarkable work of Spartans, go to spartanscfa.com. In his story of hopefulness, Douglas talked about connecting Jimmy from coaches across continents and Shukla at the Parikama Foundation in India. You can find out more at coachesacrosscontinents.org and the Parikama Foundation. For our second year of Wonderspace, we have redesigned the website to make it easier to engage with all the previous 41 episodes. Go to ourwonder.space. I want to thank Douglas for joining us on this Wonderspace, and I hope you can join us next week for more wonders and stories of hopefulness.